the next topic which we are going to discuss are the factors influencing transportation decisions but it's very easy to understand now goods as we have seen uh, we have already seen uh, the dif uh, different modes of transportation so goods can be transported from the point of origin to the point of destination any of these modes of transportation it is uh, we have already seen uh, the advantages and disadvantages of all different modes of transportation now the next topic is factors influencing the transportation decision which particular mode of transportation should we use that is what we are going to discuss now so the first one is nature of goods now the nature of goods it is an important factor like if the goods are expensive if the goods that are to be transported are expensive goods then it is better to use airways and if it is large and bulky goods then we can use waterways and railways for liquid and gaseous substances we would be using pipelines so depending on the type of goods nature of goods we can select the mode of transportation same way availability we will be using or uh, those transportation facility which is easily available or accessible or uh, which means which is readily available when we require it and when we desire it hence the mode of transportation should be in such way that it is easily accessible distance covered before uh, selecting the mode we can see uh, we have to decide upon the distance if the goods are to be uh, uh, transported to a very short distance we can use the roadways and if it is to a larger distance we have to think about rail water or airplane airways like we need not unnecessarily spend a huge amount if the distance can be covered at a shorter period we can simply use the roadways cost involved cost factor means the money or the fund which is allocated for the transportation now we know that water transportation is the cheapest mode but it is also the slowest mode now if we have uh, as a products here for example jaise ki even if the products are reaching the destination after two weeks or after a month and if there is no problem with that time delay in and in that cases we can go for the cheaper mode of transportation that is waterways but if we are okay with the cost if we are ready to spend uh spend a good amount for moving the goods from one place to another we can use any other mode of transportation delivery time before selecting the mode we should check the delivery details like scheduled delivery time uh, time of uh, arrival date of delivery those things if the goods are to be transported urgently like as i told you suppose some medicines have to be transported urgently then definitely we cannot depend on waterways and all that time we will have to be uh, depending on airways frequency frequency means how many times it would be available like uh, up and down or to and fro the number of service frequency if we always want it if the frequency which our company requires is more then according to that we will have to select the mode capability of the mode especially carrying capacity or the capability to accommodate the goods we have already seen railways and waterways are the best means to carry goods in huge capacity because they can transport huge and heavy loads but and airways at the same time have the lowest carrying capacity speed speed is a time taken by for transporting the goods higher time if we require higher time or higher speed depending on that we should select the select the mode of transportation reliability reliability means the task of carrying the goods it should be it should be to uh, reach the goods at the destination point at the right time which is uh, adequately required for delivering the goods now reliability kis mein zyada hota hai reliability means we should be able to trust that particular mode of transportation it is normally told that pipeline is the most reliable means of transportation at the same time we cannot send every goods through the pipeline so what is according to our availability according to our requirement we should select that one which is more reliable safety the goods should be delivered or it should be reaching the destination in the same condition as they were perceived to reach it should be like there should not be any kind of damage any kind of deterioration or any kind of loss during the transit transit means during the transportation so again depending on the type of goods 
depending on the type of goods and depending our requirements we will have to select the most suitable uh, mode of transportation like as i told you if we want to reach the goods in maybe two or three hours or in, in one day we want the goods to reach our des uh, our uh, destination come whatever be it we are we are uh, ready to bear the huge expense uh, we want the goods to reach from one location to another destination in one day of course we will be using the we will be using the airways and in case waha pe airport nahi hai in case waisa hai ki we cannot reach there through airways then we will have to go for the next best option so like that like that depending on various factors only we can take a proper transportation decision regarding which mode of transportation can be used now reliability as i told you pipeline is considered as the most reliable means of transportation but can we send everything through the pipeline we cannot send solid goods at all through the pipeline so that part we cannot consider over here so again again repeating these are all common points according to the situation according to the type of product according to various these factors only we can select or we can choose the most convenient and most suitable mode of transportation of course we have already seen there are advantages and there are disadvantages for all the modes of transportation which is suiting our product or which is suiting our company's budget our company's requirements and how can we make the customer satisfied by delivering the product on time based on this thing we will have to select now the next topic is about transportation infrastructure infrastructure we know infrastructure are buildings or the other requirements which are required for supporting this transportation now it is primary a strong infrastructure requirement is something very much necessity necessary and it is a necessity it is a primary necessity we can say because if the infrastructure is not proper the transportation entire transportation process can become slower and it can become an obstacle also in the development of trade and business now here you can see some elements of uh, transportation infrastructure some points under here first one is terminal facility terminal facility may be any facility where the goods or the people are assembling or dispersing it is the location from where we can originate the goods or we can terminate or we can handle the goods like it it should have all the facilities like loading facility unloading facility platforms special equipments etc like seaport seaport that has terminal facilities take an airport uh, take a, a railway station these are all primary infrastructure or terminal facilities then we should have the vehicles vehicles for moving the goods from one place to another like when it comes to airports we have the airplanes when it comes to seaport we have the ships when it comes to bus stop the regular bus stop is also an infrastructure we have the uh, different types of uh, buses or when it comes to uh, railway stations we have the we have the trains so depending on this also the vehicles availability also is also is important right of way right of way means the privilege of moving moving or using a particular way or a path for transportation purpose it is right of way to pass over the land for transportation purpose now we we can see so many instances when national highways are constructed in our country itself when national highways are constructed what happens many times the land would be private property will have to be taken over for construction we cannot move our bus or we cannot move our vehicles through any private property that is unfair we should have or whichever mode of transportation is being used that they we, we should have the privilege to use that land or use that path and right? that is right to way then prime movers prime movers means that power house which is actually moving the vehicle the source of power which are required like it could be the fuel fuel used in moving the vehicle that is basically prime mover so uh, fuel is might be including petrol ya diesel ya cng whatever it is carrier organization are the transportation service provider in the business and for these people their core activity will be providing transportation itself like we can say for example uber ola these are all examples of carrier and best buses are carrier organizations their main aim would be to provide provide transportation 
these infrastructures are very much required, very much required for the transportation business to move ahead. We need terminal facilities, we need airport, seaport, everything. We need vehicles for that. We need the right of way, the path or the privilege to use that particular area. Prime movers are required, which helps in uh, actually, or which are the powerhouses to use this vehicle. Then carrier organizations. Now, the next topic is about intermodal transportation. Now, it is also known as multimodal transportation when we use or when we combine more than one mode of transportation at the same time or at the same journey. We can say if we are using intermodal transportation. And the main aim here is to take the advantage of the various modes of transportation. It helps to provide the best service at the lowest possible cost. Now, the significance here is that it helps to minimize the time minimizing the cost and reducing the cost. Or we can say, uh, we can say uh, reducing the difficulties also during transportation. For example, if you if I'm traveling to one place to another, I have reached there, and then I want to continue the journey. I can either use a, a railway, I can either use a train, or I can either use a roadway, just an example. But train less train I will get. Okay, for moving to the uh, required location. But I, I frequently I will get buses from that area. So when I when I compare, I can for minimizing the time, I can use the bus, but for minimizing the cost, I will have to wait for the train like that. So when we are combining more than one mode of transportation available, that is known as intermodal transportation. It is also known as multimodal transportation. Now, one more thing which you have to remember here is containerization. What is containerization? You can see in this picture over here, containers, big, big or large, large containers. You can see over here, a large containers. This is commonly used during water, water transportation. Now, what is containerization? It is basically uh, the method of distributing merchandise. Merchandise means goods in a unitized form, like in one particular unit. Container refers to the physical equipment, which is used to unify number of shipments together, and then it will be moving as one single unit. These are used to handle heavy or bulk merchandise. Mer merchandise means bulk shipment. Now, this is an example of an intermodal transportation which will use intermodal containers. They will be having standard definition, standardized dimension. Dimension is in standardized size. They can be loaded, unloaded, stacked, AQ per and it can be easily used over long distances. And it can be easily even moved from one transportation mode to another one without opening it. So the goods inside are very much safe. The handling system majorly are done with the help of mechanized system. Like cranes are used, uh, forklift trucks, etc. are used. And all the containers will be numbered properly and tracked also using, especially nowadays using technology or using computerized system. And containers can be moved and it is more commonly moved using roadway, railway and ships. We know that airplane, we have already seen bulk transportation is not commonly possible using airways. So, uh, apart from airways, by roads, containerization is possible. Railways also it is possible. By ships also it is possible. What is it actually? It is a physical equipment only. Inside that, number of shipments are, are added together or kept together and it will be moving as one individual unit. Like here you can see how this crane is being used to lift the container. Now, advantages and disadvantages of containerization. Again, there is no door-to-door -door shipment available over here. It will help to reduce the freight cost, less documentation, reduce warehousing and inventory cost, higher productivity. And everything we cannot put in containerization. That is disadvantages. It is again... A difficulty to trust liability because there will be several carriers. For example, roadway use karenge, roads ke through truck may be use karenge, uske baad wo containers bahar se shift karke, maybe they will keep it in a ship. So what happens, agar kuch gadbad ho bhi gaye, if we will not understand ki waha pe, pro, kaha pe problem ho gaya hai. Then heavy capital investment required, then proper material handling equipments are required for moving the containers. Now this is very easy to understand intermodal combination like as i told you intermodal combination kya hota hai 
when we use when we use more than one mode of transportation and it is also known as multi modal transportation here you can see piggyback piggyback means combining rail and road when we tra uh, travel by both railways and by roadways that is known as piggyback when we travel by water and road transport it is known as fishy back it is easy to remember fishy back water and road and when we travel by air and road combined it is known as birdy back okay now when we are using water land water that is known as land bridge land is acting as a bridge over here land is acting as a bridge between two water destinations from origin we start from water then we travel in land Again, we have water. Uh, destination is water. That is known as land bridge. These are just some names which you have to remember. Now, here you can see land bridge again explained. Water, land, water, land, water road. Here, what happens? You begin by traveling by a ship. You move across it. After that, you use the land. Again, you will have to use the water road. And it will. It also involves mini land bridge and micro land bridge. Mini land bridge means port to port, port to port, and micro land bridge means port to non-port city. For example, I'll tell you how it is working. Land bridge, mini land bridge means only transportation happens to port to port. Like something is uh, more to be moved from Mumbai to Kochi, Mumbai to Chennai, port ke through hi hota hai wo. And when we are moving goods from port to a non-port city. non port means which is not having a port for example delhi delhi does not have a port over there so what happens if some goods are coming to mumbai or we have to take it to delhi we cannot use a port it will be moved either through railways or airways or or roadways now factors influencing transportation cost there are two important factors that is product related and market related which helps in deciding the transportation cost product related we will see first density density means weight and space aspect weight of a product weight of a product kaise hota hai sometimes kya hota hai ki some products will be light weight but it requires more space to occupy for example when you are moving cotton cotton light weight hota hai बट कॉटन मतलब फॉर एग्जांपल कॉटन फार्मिंग के बाद वहां से लेके दूसरी जगह पे लेके जाते समय वेट विल बी लेस बट इट ऑक्यूपाइज ह्यूज स्पेस सो कैपेसिटी द व्हीकल्स कैपेसिटी बिकम्स लेस ओवर देयर सम टाइम्स व्हाट हैपेंस द प्रोडक्ट्स विल बी हेवी वेटेड बट ऑक्यूपाइज लेस स्पेस फॉर एग्जांपल ग्लास आइटम ग्लास टम्बलर या ग्लास बॉटल्स एंड ऑल वेट इज वेरी हाई बट इट विल ऑक्यूपाइ लेस स्पेस so many times what happens the vehicles ut uh, space and weight utility will be less utilized will not be properly utilized because of this because of this it will unnecessarily incur the incur huge cost then stowability stowability refers to the dimension of the product size shape etc of a product you might have noticed uh, when we uh, ship or when we uh, uh, move goods normally goods are uh, kept in cardboard boxes which are either rectangular shape or square shape just imagine if the shape is odd maybe if it is a circular uh, shape or an oval shape what happens thoda jitne bhi jagah tha wo waste ho jayenge unutilized ho jayenge so odd spaces or odd shape odd sizes and all will not stow well stow means will not match well as per the uh, as per the requirement so unnecessarily the cost will increase so normally items which are having standard rectangular or square shape boxes and all it is easy to move and it will occupy the optimum use of the vehicle space then handling again handling also depends on the size and shape many times a product with a which are having odd size it is very difficult to handle especially by the laborers this will increase the cost of transportation and when the uh, shape and size are easy convenient with a handle and all it becomes easy for them to handle it will reduce the transportation cost liability refers to the probability of any kind of theft or damage to the product during transportation of the product we are responsible only during transportation okay so sometimes products are subject to damage 
may be due to any kind of weather conditions or any kind of temperature humidity some reason if the products are damaged the, the they should have the responsibility or they should take the responsibility claim or accept responsibility for such kind of damage these are all product related now market related what happens location of the market sometimes the goods are to be transported to a longer distance of course the transportation cost will be high and vice versa if it is a shorter distance it will be less nature and extent of the government regulation like for example sometimes some regulations will be given brought in by the government some changes will be there in the policies and all that also will uh, will uh, affect the transportation cost seasonality of product movement for example sometimes product movement happens only certain products happens only during particular seasons so what happens during that particular season the transportation uh, carrier they will be having huge demand for example in regions where seasonal fruits and agricultural products are manufactured transportation cost will be very high during the peak season whereas it will reduce during off season then of course during domestic and international transportation we know uh, for international transportation the cost will be high compared to domestic transportation degree of competition also Uh, it is also a major factor here. Degree of competition happens mainly due, through various modes of transportation, or through various uh, transportation carriers in the same mode also. So, depending on that also, the cost will be varying. This much is about the first topic in the second module. Once again, I will start from the beginning. you can see over here how we started meaning of transportation introduction to transportation then functionality that is product movement and product storage principles of transportation economies of scale and economies of distance larger the weight lesser will be the transportation cost larger the distance lesser will be the transportation cost participants in the transportation process five participants different modes of transportation and we have seen the advantages disadvantages and all of each and every mode then after that comes the factors influencing transportation decision it all depends on your capability your type of the product and these factors then infrastructure required common infrastructure basic infrastructure required then important one what is intermodal transportation what is containerization containers are actually uh they move similar type of goods together like even though for example 100 units of small small banagane ki jagah pe wo combine karke ek single unit bana ke wo wo move karne ke liye then these are some examples of containers advantages and disadvantages intermodal combinations land bridge factors influencing transportation cost 